complete written statement will be included in the hearing record. And we'd like now to proceed uh, with Mr. Dodero. Mr. Dodero. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, Congressman Schock, members of the subcommittee. I am uh, very pleased to be here today to discuss GAO's report on the fiscal year 2009 consolidated financial statements of the United States government. As been mentioned in your opening comments, we did render an unqualified opinion on the statement of social insurance, and this is very important because the programs that it covers, Social Security and Medicare, are very important to understand the financial condition of the federal government and the sustainability of the commitments that it has been made. Unfortunately, as in past years, we've been unable to give an opinion on the uh, cruel-based uh, financial statements of the federal government for a wide range of reasons, including serious financial management problems at the Department of Defense and the inability to eliminate intragovernmental transactions among federal agencies. As Congressman Issa mentioned, there's a lot of system problems uh, that are also been noted in our audit reports. Uh, we've also, in the report, uh, cited, uh, as Congressman Schock mentioned, the uh, almost $100 billion in improper payments uh, that have been made. Uh, and there are uh, pervasive information security problems with the federal government systems that need attended to. We've made a number of recommendations, actions are underway. Now, our report also, and the report of the government's financial statements begins to shed some light on the effects of the recession on the federal government's finances, as well as the efforts that have been taken in order to deal with stabilizing our financial markets and stimulating economic growth. Uh, and as a result, a lot of the transaction activity of the TARP program of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act are beginning to show up on the financial statements, but that story has not been told yet. There's a lot of uncertainties yet. There's a lot of money still to be spent under the Recovery Act, and so it'll be important to follow through those activities uh, in the coming years. Now, if I could, uh, it also, our report talks about the long-term fiscal path of the federal government. We concluded, as has been mentioned today, and have concluded for a while, that the federal government's on an unsustainable long-term fiscal path, and action needs to be taken. Uh, as this chart shows and has been alluded to in your opening statements, uh, under this simulation, which is based on uh, uh, past practices and policy preferences, uh, the federal government debt held by the public within the next 10 years could exceed the historical high level as a percent of gross domestic product that was set back in World War II at 109%. Last year was at 53%. This year it's approaching uh, uh, two-thirds of the gross domestic product annual deficit. Uh, but this is total debt held by the public. Now, what does that mean in terms of the magnitude of the challenge? The next chart shows that by 2020, if you hold revenue constant at the 40-year average of 18.1%, the federal government would have enough revenue to pay for the net interest on the debt, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, and would have to borrow the equivalent uh, amount of money to pay for the entire rest of the operations of the federal government, including the Defense Department uh, and uh, you know, transportation, et cetera, going, going forward. Uh, now, the next chart shows, as Congressman Connolly mentioned, there is a window of opportunity to deal with this issue, but that window is rapidly closing. Uh, the first members of the baby boom generation, which are the creation of the demographic wave, which is driving a lot of these changes, uh, have already begun to apply for Social Security in 2008, two years ago. Uh, the Medicare trust fund uh, is in a cash uh, deficit situation. Uh, in this fiscal year, the Social Security systems actually has negative cash uh, uh, inflows. That was not expected to happen, but because of the recession and other things, so that the Social Security program had been making a net contribution to help reduce the borrowing costs of the federal government. That's changed temporarily, and within the next uh, six years or so, uh, it can be uh, is estimated to have uh, negative cash flows on a consistent and growing basis. So action is urgently needed uh, to begin to address this issue. 
I recognize the economy is still fragile. We need to uh, keep an eye on that in the short term. But the Congress and the administration, the President, need to focus on coming up with a plan uh, with the same intensity that they focused on in dealing with economic recovery and employment situations uh, right now in order to address this issue. I was very pleased to see the Congress pass the PAYGO uh, provisions, which will help deal with programs going forward to make sure they're funded for, but we have to deal uh, with these legacy issues and the estimated commitments. Uh, as Congressman Cooper mentioned, I was uh, also pleased to see the President uh, appoint the Deficit Commission. I think that's a very important step forward. I'd be, uh, this concludes my uh, statements. I, I, I might note in my last chart, though, that we also, in addition to doing long-term simulations of the federal government, we also have begun doing simulations of the state and local sector. And the state and local sector is on the same ominous path of uh, continual deficits uh, uh, that are large and growing. And this chart shows the solid line is the federal government's projections on annual deficits going forward. If you add the state and local sector to that, you get the dotted line. And so right now, uh, both the federal government and the state and local sector are under a great fiscal stress. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here today, and I look forward to addressing your questions at the appropriate time. Thank you so much, Mr. Dodaro, and now we'll proceed with Mr. Gray. Chairwoman Watson and Congressman Schock, thank you for inviting me to discuss the financial report of the United States government for fiscal 2009 and the related audit by the Government Accountability Office. Your interest in improving financial management is greatly appreciated. The financial report is prepared from the audited financial statements of specifically designated federal agencies including cabinet departments and many smaller independent agencies. In fiscal 2009, 20 of the 24 CFO Act agencies earned unqualified opinions on their financial audits. And it was particularly noteworthy that the Department of Treasury itself the clean, received a clean audit this year. Given the number and the complexity of the new programs that deal with the economic crisis, the clean opinion reflects exceptional work by Treasury and its auditor, GAO. The U.S. government also achieved a third consecutive unqualified or clean audit on the statement of social insurance. However, for fiscal 2009, GAO was again unable to express an opinion on the other government-wide financial statements. The disclaimer on those statements stems from three long-standing material weaknesses. Serious financial management control issues at the Department of Defense, the inability to adequately reconcile and account for intergovernmental activities and balances between agencies, and deficiencies in the process of preparing the consolidated financial statements. We nevertheless have made progress over the years in resolving many GEO findings. Treasury and OMB's efforts to date have resulted in the reduction of GEO findings and recommendations by more than two-thirds, from more than 150 a few years ago to just over 40 in fiscal 2008. But we have been less successful in fixing some basic structural problems. GEO, for example, has repeatedly identified our inability to balance the intergovernmental transactions between government agencies. And while it will take all agencies working together to eliminate this as a material weakness, Treasury, working with OMB, will assume responsibility for fixing it. The process for preparing consolidated financial statements is also a material weakness. This material weakness includes numerous shortfalls, but most importantly, there is a structural deficiency whereby key accounting components had not been included in our consolidation process. And Treasury is developing an accounting structure to resolve this issue. This new structure will need to be tested and implemented, <coughs> but within a couple years, we should be able to make significant improvements in the financial report preparation process. Government's mainly accrual-based net operating costs for fiscal 2009 increased nearly $250 billion from a year earlier to $1.25 trillion. This increase result primarily from the substantial decline of more than $460 billion in government revenues, due in large part to the effects of the recession and tax changes associated with the stimulus package. The government's budget deficit for 2009 was $1.4 trillion. 
The government's balance sheet shows that its liabilities exceed its assets by more than $11 trillion. And the largest categories of liabilities are the government's debt held by the public, $7.6 trillion, and the federal employees and veterans and post-employment liabilities of more than $5 trillion. For fiscal 2009, the government's balance sheet reflects that many investments have been made pursuant to the economic recovery shortfalls. These include $240 billion in outstanding TARP investments, as well as investments in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, to preferred stock purchase agreements valued at $65 billion and $185 billion of mortgage-backed securities. It is important to note that the financial report also discloses significant activity that occurred after fiscal 2009, including an additional $90 billion repaid from TARP recipients and the modifying of funding commitment cap for Fannie and Freddie. Although market stabilization and economic recovery were the priority for fiscal 2009, the continued issue of fiscal sustainability is not being overlooked. The report discusses the government's long-term fiscal challenges of funding Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid programs, programs which will account for a large and growing portion of total government spending in both the near term and the long term. An important message conveyed in this year's financial report is that the longer that action to resolve these shortfalls is delayed, the greater the challenge will be to bring these important programs into fiscal balance. For the third year, Treasury, with uh, support from OMB and GEO, has issued a uh, companion document, the uh, Citizen's Guide for the Financial Report, which is an abbreviated form of the, of the longer uh, financial report and is much easier to read for, for the American citizens. Uh, finally, in closing, I, I do appreciate the work that the uh, committee has, has done. The efforts on, on pulling together the financial report is, is a challenging one with, with very large government agencies trying to uh, compile hundreds of thousands of, of documents and, and information in a very short period of time and, and get it right. I think we've made progress. We, we still have a long way to go, and I certainly recognize that. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman Watson, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gray, and I just want to uh, refer all members to the federal government's uh, financial health. I think it will be very informative for all of us to read it thoroughly. I'd like now to proceed uh, to Mr. Werfel, and uh, will you continue, please? Thank you, Chairwoman Watson, and Congressman Schock, and other members of the subcommittee for the invitation today oops, sorry, to discuss federal financial management issues with you. Would you turn the mic, uh, put it directly in front of you and speak into it? Just push those bottles out of the way. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this November will mark the 20th anniversary of the Chief Financial Officers Act of 1990. Uh, this is an opportune time to reflect on federal financial management community's progress during the last 20 years and plot a course for where and how the community will advance in the next 20 years. Over these past 20 years, federal government has built a solid foundation of strong accounting practice, including disciplined and consistent financial reporting, high-functioning risk management frameworks that are driving internal control improvements in financial reporting, and integration between transaction processing and our accounting records. As a result, the number of clean audit opinions at federal agencies has ridden steadily over time, while auditor-identified material weaknesses have declined. This does not mean that our journey is complete. To the contrary, more work is necessary to strengthen this foundation, including addressing the ongoing weaknesses that prevent the Department of Defense, NASA, the Department of Homeland Security, the State Department, and the government as a whole from achieving a clean audit opinion. Perhaps even more critical, significant work remains in areas of financial management that tie more directly to the American public's bottom line, the elimination of government waste in areas such as improper payments, unneeded federal real estate, and cost overruns in the deployment of our new financial systems. Moreover, as the public's demand increases for information on where taxpayer dollars are going and how they are being used, the federal financial community must rise to this challenge and produce this information more timely and reliably. Before I turn to these priorities, I'd like to spend a few moments on the important impacts 
that the federal economic recovery efforts ha are having on the federal financial management community today. First, I'd like to commend the Treasury Department for the extraordinary accomplishment of achieving a clean opinion on the first ever audit of the financial statements for the Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP. The TARP program presents a unique financial reporting challenge given the complex nature of the transactions and the volume of activity involved. For the Treasury Department to achieve a clean audit in the very first year of the program demonstrates how far the federal government has come in the sophistication and adeptness of our solutions for reporting traditional accrual-based financial statements. At the same time, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act presented a different reporting challenge to the federal financial management community, requiring more frequent and detailed information on federal spending than has ever been traditionally captured by our financial statements. Due to system limitations and challenges of readily producing this information, many agencies have relied on Herculean manual efforts to compile, compile or combine information from several disparate systems to comply with the Recovery Act reporting requirements. In other words, we are commendably meeting the significant reporting challenge of the Recovery Act, but we need to re-examine our reporting infrastructure so that it better aligns to our efforts. It is with this backdrop that OMB, working closely with the community, has established the following cri critical priorities moving forward. First, eliminating waste by reducing improper payments and our investments in unneeded real estate. Second, closing the efficiency and technology gap in financial operations by ending an era of failed large-scale financial system modernizations in favor of shorter-term targeted solution that reduce risk and cost by focusing only on our most critical business needs and aligning better to the capacity of our organizations to manage change. And third, promoting accountability and innovation through open government by improving the reliability and completeness of federal spend data. Importantly, including meeting the full mandate of the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act to capture sub-award data on USAspending.gov. And by aligning the financial reporting model so that the information we report and audit is the most relevant to the public and agency decision makers, and that the internal controls that we scrutinize and prioritize resources to strengthen are more, more closely tied to the most significant financial risks we face. My written testimony, along with the 2009 financial report, go into additional detail on each of these priorities. I look forward to working with this subcommittee and other members of Congress as we tackle these important issues. Thank you again for inviting me to testify today. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, and we'll proceed with this, Mr. Malay. Chairwoman Watson, Mr. Shockey, and other distinguished members, I'm pleased to have the opportunity today just to um, testify on the State Department's 2009 financial statements. Our annual audit and agency financial report is the cornerstone of our efforts to disclose the Department's financial status and provide transparency and accountability to the U.S. people. We take this responsibility very seriously and take great pride in the improvements we have made in the Department's financial platform over the last decade. The Department's financial activities are complex and set against the backdrop of global issues and engagements we face in the nation of, with nations around the world carrying out our foreign policy. They reflect the immense financial work that occurs behind the scenes every day by the Department's financial officials operating at 260 locations around the world in over 172 different countries operating with 150 different currencies in often very dangerous places like Haiti, Afghanistan, and Iraq. They also reflect our position as a shared financial service provider for over 40 customer agencies overseas, and we also have teamed with the Agency for National Development and run their financial system as well. We know that strong financial management and interest controls provide the building blocks to support the transparency of operations and accountability to effectively manage limited resources. We have worked diligently to embrace the broadening landscape of financial compliance and reporting requirements and proactively incorporate them into our ongoing budgetary and financial operations on a day-to-day -day basis. We're proud that the Department has received clean audited opinions for eight out of the last ten years. Last year's 
annual audit process was extremely difficult as we engaged a new audit firm to conduct our annual audit. Our experience told us that our worldwide operations and complexities were going to be carrying out our foreign policy was going to be difficult for a new firm to ascertain in the tight time frames. Unfortunately, this proved to this proved to in, so in the outcome, and we believe that the outcome of the audit doesn't really reflect the status of our finances. Coming into the fiscal year 2009, the department faced no previously identified material weakness in internal controls, and significant work had been done to address the 2008 uh, significant deficiencies. In addition, I'm pleased to report the department maintains a robust system of internal controls overseen by the department's senior leadership and administered by the Bureau of Resource Management. For 2009, the Secretary was able to provide an overall unqualified statement of assurance about the department's internal controls in accordance with the Federal Financial Manager's Integrity Act, as well as an unqualified statement of assurance for internal controls on financial reporting. However, the department's new order issued an unqualified opinion for our consolidated statement of net costs and a qualified opinion for our consolidated balance sheet and consolidated statement of net position. The qualified opinions were based on the auditor's inability to satisfy themselves that property and equipment, and equipment were free of material misstatements as of September 30th, 2009. The new auditors were not able to satisfy themselves as to whether 2009 combined statement of budgetary resources was free of material misstatement in time to meet the deadlines, even though we were given the 30 days extension. Um, the new auditor identified three material weaknesses and three significant deficiencies as a result of their work in 2009. The material weaknesses related to the need for the International Boundary and Water Commission's liability statements. It, uh, it referred to the accounting for our property and equipment and the timeliness of our financial reporting. While we were extremely disappointed in the results, we are committed to addressing the items cited by the auditor and implementing the corrective action plans to ensure we're in a better position uh, this year as we move down the process. I have included information in my statement on all these material weaknesses and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Millay. And let's now proceed with Mr. Easton. Thank you. Chairwoman Watson, Congressman Schock, distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear today. And thank you especially for your continued support of America's Armed Forces. Having worn the uniform for many years, I personally appreciate that support. I submitted a statement for the record and would like to summarize it briefly. I was asked to speak about the results of DOD's financial statement audit for fiscal year 2009. As you know, the Department continues to receive a disclaimer of opinion on our consolidated financial statements, but we are making progress, although major challenges remain from allowing us to achieve an unqualified opinion. For, many thi for, mi for one thing, many of our systems are old and handle information in ways never intended to meet current audit, audit standards. This problem makes financial auditability extremely difficult in a large organization, organization that is functionally decentralized. Our legacy systems are also not well integrated, and they do not consistently collect data at the transaction level. This leads to business processes that tend to be non-standard, often lacking effective financial controls, and in these cases, consistent application of additional compensating controls becomes critical. The organizations and financial entities within DOD, and there, and there are a few getting more larger and more complex have it, that have achieved auditability have been small enough to be able to overcome those deficiencies thus far. The scale of our business operation adds to the problem. Every business day, we obligate between two and three billion dollars and handle hundreds of thousands of payment transactions uh, often in com under combat conditions. Given our size and mission requirements, it would be prohibitively costly to deploy an army of accountants to solve our problems manually. And that is specifically why our current DOD business transformation is so critical, including the ongoing development of a business enterprise architecture and introduction of modern systems, both of which initiatives are well underway. In short, we need a more disciplined, automated business environment to maintain necessary, clean tr necessary controls cost effectively. But meanwhile, we are making progress. The auditor's report on DOD's financial statements includes description of several material financial reporting weaknesses, and the department is following a revised strategy to address these weaknesses 
and improve the quality of the financial management information that are used each day by the department my written statement contains details of our strategy and progress in several current current areas of weakness including property management environmental liabilities military health care liabilities funds balance with treasury reconciliation and intergovernmental uh, transactions but there is much more work to do in retrospect earlier efforts while making progress lack the coherent strategy to engage the full enterprise our new strategy was instituted approximately a little bit less than a year ago by the department's new comptroller and CFO who saw that DOD lacked a common goal and priorities in the audit readiness area. As a result, he consulted with senior leaders in military departments and defense agency, our colleagues uh, that, that you've heard from at OMB, GAO, as well as congressional staff members. And last August, we issued a memorandum that outlined the new priorities. These priorities focused on improving the quality, accuracy, and reliability of financial information that we use every day. This will focus on budgetary information, uh, specifically that we use for resource allocation decisions and the physical accountability, existence and completeness of our assets that our warfighters rely upon. So why is this going to be different? Uh, Congress has showed support for our new approach and, and identified that in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2010. Since then, we have taken specific steps to implement it. First, the initiative has the appropriate priority and full senior leadership support. It's one of our top ten business priorities. Secondly, we have a quarterly a governance board that is chaired by the department CFO. It includes a new office that has been established. Our chief management, our uh, chief management officers and their representatives, as well as our comptrollers, in addition to having personal oversight by Deputy Secretary Lynn, our chief management officer. Third, we have obtained resources to support our plans. Allocating resources for this kind of initiative competes with other warfighting priorities. But as we have seen in Southwest Asia, good, strong business practices are a force multiplier. And fourth, we have made improvement of audit readiness among the components one of our high priority performance goals uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the OMB uh, priority, and, and we focus on that and measure each year. Recognizing the importance of demonstrating measured progress, our plan includes interim goals that we will achieve, that we intend to achieve each year. We also will provide Congress with a semi-annual semi report on our financial improvement and audit readiness every May uh, and November, and the first report will be issued within the next month. In addition, we expect to report to Congress on a feasible approach for achieving fully auditable statements. For now, we are focusing, as I mentioned, on the financial information that we are, have most, that are most useful to management. That will allow us to establish a, a, a firm foundation. That foundation is internal controls and installation of more capable business systems that will support our auditability as well as the auditability of the federal government statements. As we look ahead and implement this approach, we believe it's important to also build upon the existing strengths within defense financial management. Our defense financial managers are providing DOD's warfighters the resources and financial services needed to, make, to meet their national security objectives, and we're doing this around the world, including Iraq and Afghanistan. We also have effective financial processes in many areas. Our payment processes produce timely and accurate payments in a very high percentage of cases. Interest payments have been dramatically reduced. Our process that which we distribute and account for funds uh, has been externally validated. And so we have progress that we can build upon. My point is that we are doing much uh, in our business well, but further improvements are necessary and a revised focus on our business processes using a financial auditor's lens. In conclusion, our ongoing efforts to improve the quality of financial information will build on current strengths, producing changes that will ultimately result in a favorable opinion. We need to make improvements in the Department of Defense financial management while continuing to provide strong budget and financial information to our warfighters. As a Deputy Chief Financial Officer, I am personally committed to, better to, to this initiative. We're striving to support our national security mission by addressing these material weaknesses. Most importantly, we need to reinforce your confidence in our stewardship over public funds. Thank you for inviting me today and for your support for our efforts. I welcome your questions. I'd like to thank uh, each one of the witnesses in this first panel. And we're now going uh, to move to the question period and proceed under the five minute rule. And uh, I'm going to start the questioning. And uh, my first question, comment, and then question will be uh, to Mr. Dodaro. And uh, then we will move to the other witnesses as well. Uh, GAO has frequently cited 
the federal government's uh, ineffective process for preparing the consolidated financial statements as a major impediment that precludes the issuance of a